In the 15th century, there were 25 million people living in the Aztec Empire. A hundred years later, there were just one million left. What happened to the Aztecs? Here's the awful truth about why they disappeared. Like pretty much all Europeans of the colonial era, the conquistadors were hell-bent on ruling the world. The first Europeans arrived in Mexico in 1517. Discovering the land was already inhabited by the formidable Aztec Empire, they left and returned two years later with a larger force, one bent on pillage, plunder, conquer, and death. In November 1519, Hernán Cortés reached the Aztec Empire with his men. Believing the Spanish to be friendly, the Aztec leader Montezuma invited them into the Aztec capital city of Tenochtitlan, which at the time was one of the largest cities in the world, as guests. That was the beginning of the end. First, Cortés took Montezuma as a hostage. Then, in 1520, Cortés briefly left the city in order to deal with, of all things, another conquistador. While he was gone, his second-in-command, Pedro de Alvarado, took the opportunity to brutally massacre the Aztec ruling class while they were peacefully gathered for a celebratory feast. The Aztec people rose up in rebellion. During the chaos, Montezuma died under mysterious circumstances, and the Spanish were expelled from the city. But in May 1521, Cortés returned to lay siege to the capital with the help of several local tribes who were enemies of the Aztecs. And just 93 days later, the Spanish had won. The Aztec Empire was gone forever. But it wasn't guns or swords that proved the difference. It was something else altogether. When the conquistadors took over the city of Tenochtitlan, one of their keys to victory was smallpox. The Spanish brought many new diseases to Mexico, including mumps and measles, but it was smallpox that did the most damage, and an epidemic swept through the city right at the height of the siege. According to PBS, the epidemic spread from the coast of Mexico to the capital and eventually killed a whopping 40% of the city's population. And worse, though roughly a third of all smallpox victims die, another third end up going permanently blind, meaning the city was completely devastated by illness at the worst possible time. Smallpox was a bad disease among Europeans, but it was even worse for the Aztecs because no one on the continent had ever been exposed to the virus, and therefore they had no natural immunity to it nor did they have medicine to help them combat it. As one Franciscan monk who was with Cortez during the whole ugly affair wrote, as the Indians did not know the remedy of the disease, they died in heaps like bedbugs. Nice analogy, Father, very empathetic. The smallpox epidemic of 1521 ended the Aztec Empire and led to Spanish rule over Mexico. But it wasn't smallpox that ended the Aztecs as a people. That came courtesy of another, far more mysterious plague known as the Cocolitzli. Cocolitzli is actually the Aztec word for pestilence, so figuring out exactly what the disease was had proved to be a major challenge for modern historians and scientists. But what we do know is the terrible human toll it took on the population of Mexico. The first Cocolitzli epidemic happened in 1545, and it was so devastating that it forced the abandonment of entire villages, including a Mixtec village in Oaxaca, where modern researchers recently uncovered skeletons believed to have been the victims of the first occurrence of the disease. A second outbreak hit in 1576, right around the time survivors were probably starting to relax and think the pestilence was a thing of the past. According to The Guardian, the second epidemic killed over half the region's population in a period of less than five years. A historian from the period described the extent of the devastation, writing, In cities and large towns, big ditches were dug, and from morning to sunset, the priests did nothing else but carry the dead bodies and throw them into the ditches. All told, the Cocolitzli epidemic is believed to have caused the deaths of up to 17 million people in South and Central America. According to The Guardian, it killed 80% of the population of Mexico and Guatemala, similar in scale to the bubonic plague epidemic that killed 25 million people in Europe during the 14th century. For people who were already devastated by smallpox and conquistadors, Cocolitzli must have been both terrifying and demoralizing. Only a real optimist could witness such a thing and not see it as the beginning of the end, and it's probably safe to say there weren't a lot of Aztec optimists left in the world at the time, especially since the disease strangely left the Spanish population of Mexico almost completely untouched. Exactly what Cocolitzli was baffled scientists for a long time, largely because its symptoms didn't seem to directly correspond with any known disease. Franciscan friar Juan de Torcomanda, who witnessed the epidemic firsthand, describes the fevers as, quote, contagious, burning, and continuous, all of them pestilential and most part lethal. He then went on to describe specific symptoms, saying, The tongue was dry and black, enormous thirst, urine of the colors sea green, vegetal green, and black, sometimes passing from greenish color to the pale. Pulse was frequent, fast, small, and weak, sometimes even null. The eyes and the whole body were yellow. This stage was followed by delirium and seizures. Then, hard and painful nodules appeared behind one or both ears along with heartache, chest pain, abdominal pain, tremor, great anxiety, and dysentery. 
According to The Atlantic, some scientists suggested it was hemorrhagic fever, similar to Ebola or yellow fever. Others thought it might have been spread by rodents, like bubonic plague. But the prevailing theory is actually something much stranger. So what exactly was Kokolitzli? Scientists finally think they've figured it out, and you'll probably be surprised by their conclusions, especially if you thought it was botulism. Botulism! 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 botulism. Salmonella? Yes, it was actually salmonella, the same disease that makes you obsessively, compulsively wash your hands every time you come within a few inches of a piece of raw chicken. Except the salmonella we all know typically only causes victims to suffer from nausea and diarrhea. According to the CDC, though, there are an estimated 1.35 million salmonella infections in the U.S. every year, and those infections result in only about 420 deaths. Yet DNA research on skeletons of the victims of Kokolitzli suggests it may indeed have been salmonella. Using DNA samples taken from the teeth of these victims, researchers generated a list of bacteria that were present, and salmonella enterica was one they kept finding. Here's the key, though. The type of salmonella that killed the Aztecs isn't the same as the one we're used to. It's actually a subset called Paratypy C, which is similar to a rare modern type that has a 10 to 15% mortality rate. Paratypy C causes an enteric fever nearly identical to typhoid, which is why a lot of scientists once believed that Kokolitzli may have been a form of typhoid. Some scientists still don't think it was Salmonella that killed off the Aztecs, though. There are no historical incidents of Salmonella causing an outbreak quite so deadly. So if the authors of the recent study are correct, the Aztecs were just really unfortunate to encounter such a rare and devastating illness just as they were recovering from the Spanish conquest and other deadly diseases like smallpox. The trouble with trying to diagnose a disease so many years after the fact is that it's impossible to really know the whole picture. Your knowledge is limited to just what you can pull out of the teeth of people who died hundreds of years ago, and what you can read in the historical accounts that may or may not have been written by people who had any idea what they were talking about. And the problem with the tooth examination strategy is that it can only look at DNA. But some viruses don't have DNA, they have RNA. So if the people scientists examined died from an RNA virus, researchers wouldn't be able to tell. So the best that researchers can do is say that they found salmonella in the teeth of people who died around the same time as the epidemic but they can't really say for sure that the salmonella is necessarily what killed them. It may even have been a combination of factors, with salmonella as the tipping point. According to The Atlantic, it's possible that other diseases making the rounds at the time exacerbated the salmonella, or even that salmonella exacerbated some other yet unidentified disease. Naturally, we're going to want to blame Europeans for the introduction of this particular strain of salmonella because, duh, Europeans pretty much messed up everything they touched between 1492 and 1944 or so. The fact that Kokolitzli was so devastating and had such a high mortality rate, combined with the fact that it disproportionately seemed to affect indigenous people while having little or no effect on the Spaniards who were living in the area, strongly suggests that it was of that European origin. But not everyone agrees. Francisco Guerra, who wrote a research paper on Aztec medicine, says there's some chance that the epidemic might have existed before the arrival of the conquistadors. There's evidence that epidemics of some kind contributed to the first migrations into Mexico in the first place, and some major epidemic might have contributed to the fall of the Toltec Empire, which precedes the Aztecs. Still, next time you eat chicken, maybe wash your hands. Oh, and there was one other major factor that really helped destroy the Aztec people drought. Yes, just in case the Aztecs weren't already starting to suspect that their gods were out to end their civilization, the two Kokolitzli epidemics coincided with long periods of drought. So not only did the Aztecs have to deal with the fact that so many of them were dying from this terrible disease, there was also the fact that they couldn't grow enough food to feed the people who were left over. According to a 2002 study published in Emerging Infectious Diseases, tree ring evidence suggests that the two Kokolitzli epidemics coincided with the worst North American drought in 500 years, which stretched all the way from Mexico to the Borel Forests of Canada and from the Pacific Coast to the Atlantic. The drought likely made the epidemic worse, not because it changed the contagion, but because when people are already suffering, well, it's not like a massive drought is going to improve anything. There is one comforting final note, though. The Aztecs aren't completely gone. Yes, it's true they were conquered and beaten back by the conquistadors, and it's true they lost a huge proportion of their population to disease. But nearly every horrible catastrophe has at least a few survivors, and that's true even of the Aztecs. According to Yahoo News, in 2017, archaeologists in Mexico announced that they'd found the remains of a dwelling where upper-class Aztecs lived following the Spanish conquest. The scientist who uncovered the dwelling said it was likely that the people who lived there were first and second generation descendants of the citizens of Tenochtitlan. 
The Aztecs moved on from there too. Today, there are roughly 1.5 million indigenous people in Mexico and beyond who speak Nahuatl, the Aztec language, as their native tongue. Many are farmers and craftspeople, and while most attend Christian churches, their culture still has many vestiges of the old Aztec ways, including traditional medicine. Conquest, killings, drought, and plague may have reduced their numbers and toppled an empire, but still, through it all, the Aztec people persist, a testament to their lasting strength and resiliency. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.